Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're going to be going over the basics of creating dashboards and how to dashboard within Salesforce and what they're used for. But first, one thing I do want to do is make sure that we are set up for success. So first, let's go into reports and we can look at a few of the reports that we have to work with. One thing that is really important about reports is that you have a good source report that has at least one type of grouping. So I'm gonna hit edit so we can go into the editor and I can show you kind of what that means. Currently we do have a group. So it is grouped by stage. And so you can see over here that we have a prospecting stage, a qualification, needs analysis, and this is on the, uh, the opportunity object. And an object is just a, a group of similar data. But as you can see, we have it grouped by stage or what point in the process each opportunity is. And the reason why we wanna have this grouping is because it allows the dashboard and all the different charts and component types to understand how to visualize it based upon that grouping. So for most of the components that we'll be adding to the dashboard, we'll be using this stage over here to uh, to group it and to visualize it based upon that grouping. I, that's a lot of words. <laughs> Let me show you real quick before we jump into it. If I wanted to add a chart, you can see what this means. If there was no grouping, we would not see a type of chart because of there not being grouping. We'd only be able to see um, a tabular component where it's just a list or a table of all the different opportunities that we have. And we can also see here, if we went to donut chart, this might not be the best example to run off of because of our data, but let's go ahead and jump into dashboards and we will be able to show you. So I'm currently on the dashboarding tab. If you don't see it, go over to the three by three over here and search in for dashboarding. It should take you to the exact same place. So now I'm gonna go to new dashboard and it should bring up our metadata. I'm just gonna say this is an example. Opportunity dashboard. We can optional for a description. The folder is gonna be where this dashboard is going to be located at. Um, your private dashboards is just for you. No one else can see it unless someone is looking over your shoulder or you take a screenshot or you are doing a screen share like I'm doing right now. But if you wanted this to be viewable or editable by other people, then you'd have to put this into a more open folder such as a sales and marketing reports folder or a lead gen folder. It really depends on what kind of company you're in. This is the exact same type of folders that you'll expect from your report folders. All right, let's go ahead and click create. All right, now we have a blank canvas that we are able to work with. I'm gonna click plus component and I'm going to click new opportunities report because I know that one has some options for us. All right, we have currently a bar chart, a horizontal bar chart. And as you can see, it, that report is also grouped by the stage of the opportunity. And that's what I was saying about the grouping where that the system takes that information from that grouping to be able to create the different accesses on whatever type of component you're creating. So it took the stages and that is now on the y-axis and then the amount or the summary of the amount per stage is going to be on the x-axis. If you wanted to change that, you could do that over here. You can change the x-axis to be record count. So how many opportunities do we have on each stage? That's also a great one that you can use. If you wanted to flip, then you would go to a different component over here. That would be the, uh, the vertical bar chart. And I'm going to, we can come down. If we wanted to change the um, display units, we'd be able to do that. I'm gonna change this back to some amount. If we will, the display units is going to be, you can do the shortened number, which we're currently on. So it just kind of automatically updates for you. But if we wanted to do full number, we could do that. We could do hundreds. We could do thousands, millions, etc. Um, and this might be different based upon different people. Show values is important if you want to show how much each individual one is worth and you can change the y-axis range to 
their inflate numbers or you can do custom. You can do it automatically. Custom is really great if you want to share it based upon maybe your company goals or whatnot. Sort by these different things. And then we add a subtitle and a folder. Again, we can do light and dark mode. Let's go ahead and add this. All right, and there are a lot of different types of components. Um, I have a video on every single type of component and the nitty gritties of each of those. You would definitely want to use one in one situation versus the other, but let's just do a quick rundown of this, each type of component. So again, I went to the same source report. You can have multiple different source reports on your reports. So let's say you have wanted to bring in information from nine different source reports. You would be able to do that. Then a source report is just the report that the dashboard is pulling from to create the component or the visualization. So it's a really awesome tool to bring in multiple reports and visualize maybe a certain goal or a certain aspect of the business that you want to show. I've seen this oftentimes for uh, sales productivity or service productivity where they come up with a formula of when they need to hire new people for the service team or the sales team and when the numbers hit on the dashboard from different reports. If it hits a certain number, then they know that it's getting close to being time. Anyways, that's a long tangent, but let's go ahead and jump into the new opportunities report and we can cover um, a few of these. So we've gone over the different bar charts. You can also have stacked ones, which are not currently available with the source report settings that we have. We might need to add a few more groupings to our source report before we have those available to us. We also have a align chart here that helps us understand this is great for any opportunities over time or through different quarters. It's easily able to show that. Then we can see a donut chart. This is great for helping us understand where things are in a whole. And I think this is really awesome in a scenario of lead generation where you can see where the highest amount of leads are coming in from and where to spend our outreach dollars that come into that specific department. So let's say we had more leads over web than we did it in person. Then we'd want to invest more in the web leads and getting more web leads in general. All right, then we have a metric. Metric is really great for helping us show something within a range. Um, currently, it's a green thing, but you can show different ranges here. So I've often seen this for cases or maybe how many cases over a certain average or a certain day or certain hours. So let's say how many cases over 36 hours old or 72 hours old. Then we would be able to create different ranges. So if we had more than five, then it was in a red range. If we had more than two, it was in a yellow range and anything under two, it would be uh, green. So that is one way to use that. All right. And then of course we have our subtitles and everything. Then we can go on to the gauge. So the gauge is also very similar where you can set up a range and you can have different colors associated with it. But this is also really great for showing like goals and how far you are on your goals. So like a sales quota or um, your average ticket close time. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the funnel. This is great for actually this scenario where we have the different opportunities in the different stages. That's really good. And then we have scatter plot. And then like I was talking before, we have this tabular component that shows just a list of all these different opportunities. And yes, there is a time and a place for this. Um, I've seen this for maybe expiring opportunities or expiring contracts where they have the five most, and I believe it's a five max or a certain number of max records that you can show here, but the top ones that will be expiring soon. Um, let's go ahead and add this. And this is responsive, so you can drag and drop. You can change the size of these. You can do a bunch of different stuff. We wanted to, we could add a filter. Now I do have a video on adding filters, but this is really great for using it to narrow down maybe by department or let's say you have um, 
three different sales departments or sales segments that you have, where you have a east, a west, and a central, you could segment it down and filter it down um, responsively by that segment or that market. So let's say you wanted to be able to change it to be the central, and then you wanted to see the same dashboard, but only for the uh, west district, then you'd be able to do that without having to create another dashboard and you could see as well as all of those together. It's a really great option. So essentially that dashboard filter is there to help you narrow things down uh, by a certain subset of logic to help you uh, see the same report just on different segments without having to copy and paste and create a whole new another report. So it is super useful. I'm going to hit save. And then, and that is kind of the basics on creating reports. Now there are other things that we can do. One thing that you do need to know about dashboarding is that you have to refresh it every time that you wanna see new updated data on your dashboard. It's not like with what report when you log in and you click on the report that it is automatically updated because there are so many different reports that can be associated with a dashboard, you'll need to refresh it so then we can refresh those uh, source reports. So it's not taking up extra time within the system. Um, other things you can do is you can subscribe to a dashboard, much like you had subscribed to a report. This just sends this to your email inbox on a frequent basis, however you decide if you wanted to have it be weekly, monthly, daily, when you'd want to have it, like what day, what time. So if you want to see, let's say every Monday morning at 7 a.m., you want to see the most up-to-date information with this dashboard, then you'd be able to set that. I am going to hit cancel out. Oh, and it will send you it to the email that you have on hand with your Salesforce org. So if you have your personal email, it will send it to your personal email. If you have your work email, which it should have your work email, it will send it there. All right. Other options that you have are to download it. You can save as new dashboard and delete. But that is the basics of your dashboarding uh, within Salesforce. This can be a really, really awesome tool to create for users, create for yourself to understand your KPIs um, at a high level basis and just a quick, quick look at it. It will take the information that it has in Salesforce. So if you have any information that's not being input to Salesforce um, or being brought in through another way, then it won't show. So just make sure that your data is clean and it is quality. That is pretty much the basics of dashboarding. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you're feeling generous. You can check out my Salesforce courses down below or on salesforceupskill.com. You can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. I post somewhat frequently there. And thank you so much. Have a great day.